Okay, so you made yourself super comfy already. Yes. You've got a galaxy, your water. Babe, I really need to be comfy because I'm pregnant. Yeah. I have to have my feet up. Second child. Oh, I know. It's so funny because we, we always like, it's almost like being at home, but instead recording it for the world. Yeah, because we always sit at this at home, don't we? In the evenings. <laughs> we sit on the sofa and we talk about our whole day. It's so funny because before I was even thinking of doing this, I was like, hmm, there's so many things that I think we should touch on. And I sat here, I'm like, we just have a conversation like we're at home. Yeah, because we talk about everything. Yeah, so I it's know. nice. But I think it's cool because there's so many things that people don't even know about mm-hmm. you. Because you always put out like snippets of like, you know, your reality at the time. Yeah, yeah. So people yeah. who have been following you for a long time have probably kept up with those snippets. But it's very rare they'll get to have like a whole kind of, like anyone that's maybe following you who's new yeah. or people that are like kind of come in in certain like breakthrough moments in your life. There's so much like depth. And I've known you for what, nearly 10 years now. Yeah. I did it. I'm 26, so I met you when I was 18. <laughs> that's when I had bangs and like. Remember, you I was telling you that the other think? day. Did you remember? You didn't remember that? I was telling you the other no, day. No, you because remember. you said pink shirt, babe. I the wore pink? a purple shirt. I'm sure it was pink. No, no, it was lilac. I remember it. Okay, yeah, it was from person. Warehouse. I remember the exact shirt I wore. Really? Yeah. And I rem- an, an apron. I wasn't wearing an apron. You no, know, it's because you were on the course and you had an apron on. The, the, makeup, the makeup apron. Babe, that's not an apron. It's a brush holder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I actually thought you were talking about my jacket. Because <laughs> my jacket was like a sleeveless. You remember a sleeveless like, you know, g like type of jacket? Uh, sleeveless g Remember, it was what? on top of the black and I had my, my jet black bangs. Remember that? And then, then it was a brush holder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Oh, so yeah, I yeah, thought you said yeah. apron because of my jacket. Okay, and I was like, no, no, no. I remember now. I remember now. You know, see, my, my, my earliest memory when I was like, hmm, this girl, was when, do you remember you, had, you, you came in one day and you were wearing that red, like, uh, red jacket, red coat? <laughs> no. You, 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 like, little red riding hood. <laughs> and Fasul was there with me that day. Yeah, and then like I was playing a game on my phone or something. Don't you remember? I was on my phone playing a game. Was I the first one to come into the room that yeah, morning? Yeah, you must be, and you must have been sitting there like, and I was just like, oh my, I'm playing a game, and like you didn't care. But. No, no, I do remember this because I remember it was just you and him. I was the earliest girl to arrive, but I don't remember wearing a red coat. Yeah, I remember the red coat. Yep. And you know what's really weird because my my mum's favorite memory of me, favorite ever, is me when I was three years old in my red coat. Really? Yeah. Red coat's I a think, thing for you. I think red is... Stands out. I think red's yeah, your colour, babe. Should, yeah. Because <laughs> that was on... Like, so, so if we take it way back, that was on the, the biggest... The biggest, the biggest question ever is how did you guys meet? Uh, yeah. And we've, we dropped it on live a couple times and like, you know, here and there when like no one's paying attention and it doesn't really matter. But, but so, when, so many people miss it then we have to answer the question over and over again. So for the record. Mm-hmm. No, so, so Shaz was on a... So I used to run my own company back when I was 18 years old. It was like a media company. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was another company associated to us. Um, and Shaz was doing a course with that makeup yeah, school, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And because we were associated, we would do all the media. So we would do all the videos, the production, the, all the photos. So Fasal and I, and like, we had a little team. And then I would be there most days, just checking up on the team, making sure everything's going right. You, did, and, you uh, totally didn't need to be there, babe. I didn't, I didn't have to be there. Right. But, um, you know, there was, a, there was a clear reason why I was there. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as an 18-year-old kid, you know, you've got a beautiful girl comes to the course and you're like, hmm. <laughs> I kept being told, I got so told off, man. Did you? Yeah, after, after the course as well, I had a meeting where I got sat down by the person who owned the makeup company and then my business partner and I sat down and said, oh, man, it's very unprofessional. Like, you can't be speaking to people in the course. Like... I was like, yeah, I don't care. You shouldn't have even told them. <laughs> they found out How though. Would they like, I, think, I think they just like got, I, I don't know, I think somehow it became bait. I must have figured it out. No, but no one's got your phone. Like, unless I told, like, unless I'm I did tell them. Say, maybe I did say, maybe I did say that was, or maybe they saw my phone in the office. I don't know. Okay, that's weird of them. They should have yeah. told the phone. But imagine I actually listened then and I actually was like, yeah, all right, cool, fine. And did I delete your number and blocked you? No, sorry, it's unprofessional. We would have never. Had Sienna. I know. <laughs> That's like, no, but that, that time was actually really weird because I remember when you text me. No, come on, tell the full story what? of how you got my number. Okay, so- Come on, no, you don't, it, you don't dodge it. it. You tell it from your side because you, okay, you no, went through the emotions. Okay, no, my side is the truth. Yeah, oh yeah, tell the truth. I agree with your side though. Right, so it was, the end, it, was, it was a Friday afternoon. We all finished early. We got our goodie bags. So excited about that because we had loads of makeup. Um, and then I was just about to leave earlier than all the girls because my mum was waiting for me downstairs. And then you were kind of faffing around the door, like just standing there. And I was like, oh, see, it was lovely to meet you, Omar. And then you were like, Shazis, and I know you want to get into like Babe, shoots and stuff. Babe, don't you remember? We, we, we were sitting down. I was sitting on the table. I remember I had a magazine. 
I was looking through this magazine. Do I remember? You, we, we I sitting. remember you near the window. Yeah, like the big I, window. Yeah, yeah, But I was sitting down on a chair. And then it, it was during the actual, like, yeah, you're wrapping up. I was still kind of part of the day. It wasn't like the bye, goodbye stage. No, it totally was, babe. Okay, go I was going to, I left straight after you took my number. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So probably towards the end, but yeah. Yeah, so anyways. Everyone was listening. No, I, I remember it was like so quiet in the room. <laughs> no, if I remember when you when you're talking to me, I kind of wanted to dodge the whole number thing yeah. because I was just like, you know, doing a course. I was in who's my it, own who's this world. kid with a bum fluff on his face? No, I was just a bit like, <laughs> I just wasn't in the zone. Do you know what I mean? So I then, know. when you were kind of you were really forceful on it. I remember you were like, try, first email, I, I was like trying to dodge everything but the number. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, no, I mean, trying to get everything but the number. So I was like, your email, you were like, oh, you, you know, you're not going to catch me on that. I was like, oh, <laughs> an office number. You were like, oh, d- I don't have one of those. I was like, oh, God's <laughs> sake. I was like, do you have a work phone? And you but were like- I asked you for your social media and you had no social media. You, you didn't have Twitter, yeah, Facebook. Like, no, you're I like, didn't. no, I don't use social media. No, no, just, I don't yeah. now, but yeah. In that, yeah and then i i was like do you know what why don't you give me your number so the, at this point i thought you would let me type your number in my phone and you were like oh just give me a phone i'll type it. i was like okay fine did i never thought you were gonna dial your number and you totally dialed your number probably because you thought i wasn't gonna ring you yeah you probably knew you know you probably thought i'm getting a vibe i, I knew I was not you're do it. way out of my league like i knew from then like i wasn't though i was absolutely babe. babe did you see me we should post a picture <laughs> <laughs> Look like, look like 10 year, ten year old Virgil Sienna. I look, I look like a little chipmunk with flying bags. Yeah, you're gorgeous. But I, I remember it was, but you understand as well, yeah. Like I, I, I did, as, as confident as I was being then, I wasn't like that confident. I was, I was a geek in school. Like my, I had flat hair gel to the front, like glasses, like A's in all my classes. Like I was just that, that, that guy that got no love from like nobody. You know what I mean? So I then, still can't remember what you looked like that day. Yeah, it was prob- I, no, really I, I probably was a bit more stylish then, a tiny bit. I was starting to get out in my comfort zone a little bit. I had a black shirt on. I had my hair waxed Feeling up a little yourself bit. A little I was stopping my hair up then. But, but you understand that see a girl, you are older than me. Yeah. yeah, she was two years older than me. So at the time you were like, what, 19 or 20? And it's like, raw, okay. Then you just, it's like, it's like, um, that kind of like, like when you're a kid and you dream about this girl in a playground and like, you know, you can't like, she's too in like whatever year she's in, you're yeah, never going to meet her. You're like that yeah, girl, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, I was like, okay. And then I remember even telling my mom, and mom was like, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. don't really care. <laughs> okay, oh my little geek. <laughs> 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 so I, yeah, go back to your room and like hoover up with the dust. <laughs> Nothing, I don't know. <laughs> um, my mom loved you. I remember when I went home and I told her you did that on my phone. And she was like, oh, he's such a lovely boy. Because I'm at he's first. so educated. And you know, <laughs> this is someone you should definitely be involved with. And I was like, absolutely not, mom. She was probably, was she trying to get you married at the time? Well, like, at least no, you, I mean, too. I was so young. Your absolutely mom's always not. been like trying to get you guys into like, stay on direction, stay on path. Like she's all for that, right? Yeah. And she obviously like, I think from whatever age I was and I can't remember she knew I was going to start getting interested in boys and I was going to maybe date or you know whatever so she wanted me to date the right I guess and for you it's like you were such a hubby material from like day one like I was like oh my god he totally just like got his way in and I don't even know how <laughs> I met her downstairs so I met her your mom before I met you because I went to the canteen with Zara she was on school holidays yeah, it was yeah, half term yeah. And I still remember that so clearly. I went to get a magazine from shops and da da da. She was like 11 or something. Anyway, um, we uh, went to the canteen and your mum was just there. And my business partner was like, hey, this is like the mother of one of the girls in the mm-hmm. course. And then me and Zara were just sitting there speaking to your mum. And like, you know, like she was asking us, like, how are you? What do you do? And I was like, oh, it's f- like we just run a media company. She's like, so really interested. Your mum's still like as interested as she is in my stuff today. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like even when she knew she would do this podcast, she was so excited for I us, know. which is very nice, mashallah, like for us to have that trait. But then, yeah, so then. Everything linked up. I met Raz because she was the model on your thing. Samara was there as well. Babe, Samara was my model too. That's so funny. So I'm literally with Samara and Raz this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. You didn't get to meet my dad. No. But, but my dad did drop me a few times, you know, during you saying, that week. Yeah. So isn't it weird that you met my mum, which was like the cool, like chilled one. Yeah. My dad wouldn't have even, well, my dad would have just shook your hand and left it yeah, there. But even those <laughs> times after, like when our families met and I would like see your dad in the car, they would never say hello to me. He was just like, You'd be just, so scared. Like, who's that guy in a nice car, man? Like, I'm not, not going to say anything But you know him. what? He was, he's so chilled, right? Like now that you know oh, him. Oh yeah, he's wicked, man. Such but it's like, it's just laugh. a perception in the beginning where you think it's the girl's dad. I think it was also like, you're like, um, 
the, the way your parents, when I got to know all you siblings as well, like the way they've raised you guys, the way they've like spent, they've, they've really spent their time, you know, mm. they craft you into like who you are, mm. you know, like and individually as well, because you're all very unique. We're so you know? different. Yeah. Right? But you all have loads of life, you mm. know, like Oz is like, you know, just active and like, you know, very switched on and sharp. Yeah. Like you're incredibly creative, incredibly funny. Raz mm. is very bubbly. You know, Yas is a bit more quiet, but he's still like really much on point and very intelligent. Yeah. So, they got they they found figured out how to excel you guys in all your different things so mm. was there like things as you were younger like your parents like really did that like kind of molded you or was it just like just to turn out the I feel on? like they they just gave us so much love and mm. they let us they had they gave us freedom they taught us like home stuff but they also paid attention to what we were actually good at i remember my mum used to really like be like oh my god shaz like she knew i loved art drawing i wasn't so much of like an ac academic type of girl so she would pay attention to all the other stuff that i actually loved so instead of like being like oh my god you know you're so shit at this <laughs> and like making it so clear that i'm so bad at something um she would just encourage me to do what i loved so i think maybe that's why we're so passionate and open-minded i don't know i think it's just the way they brought us up and your dad has like just like loved you guys a yeah lot. absolutely you know I mean? and especially if, like me and raz because we're his daughters mm. i think daughters get different type of love even till now oh uh, yeah even till now we're like best friends it's really beautiful yeah 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 so I, never, good I, never, I never ha ha like, that type of like father relationship like the first time i saw it in like a household was like mm. when i saw it with your dad and you guys, you yeah. know, and I was like, whoa, like this is beautiful. Like up close and personal, like you hear about stuff in like the movies, yeah. you know, where, like the way father daughters are, mm -hmm. you know, and because we were separated from our dad for quite a bit when we were growing up, mm -hmm. it was like a, a breath of fresh air. When you saw it, you're like, oh wow, like this is, I, I, I've learned so, so much of like being a parent through watching your parents. Yeah. You know, like the way they are, the small things, like, especially the way your dad is, like yeah. very calm, He's, very collected, yeah. but at the same time, like you're not going to cross him. <laughs> it's, it's just this aura. It, it, dads have this aura. Mm. You know he I mean? does. He yeah. No, no. I feel like even more so than my mum. Yeah, yeah. Like, as in, he's got something about him. Like, he he can sit there calm. He can have such a funny. He can have jokes. But then it, it, there's just something about him that you can't cross. Mm. <laughs> Which is so funny because he's just so funny. Mad man. Even till this day, we FaceTime like three times a day. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, they're really cool, man. They're amazing. They, 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 and they, they're so active even now, like in your, everything you're doing. Like, they keep an eye out they know everything watch everything yeah they watch so yeah, absolutely there's so much involved yeah and dad loves like to be on instagram or like on my live or something like my mom's so sort of a you just jack like, phone and use it no he'll just be like you never put me on instagram you put your mom on there all the time <laughs> or you've done a youtube video with mom and i'm like well, dad, I just don't know. Like, what do you <laughs> want me to do with you on YouTube? Do you know what I mean? I, can, I can't even make it. You've just been sarcastic for like 20 minutes. That's what yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. He goes, okay, then you guys watching this, yeah? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> you stop watching my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch her. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's what you say. <laughs> oh, my, how many times have you been out this week? <laughs> yeah. Anytime I go out, like <laughs> my father-in-law is like, he's on FaceTime. He's like, so where are you going? <laughs> All right. Cool. You're always out. So uh you still got you just now before we came was on FaceTime. So uh hope Omar hasn't got any meetings over yeah. Christmas. He's like, no, no meetings over Christmas. Okay, but obviously having a laugh, like yeah. it's, it's bands, but yeah. It's funny. He's man. just that type of guy. Yeah, it's good. So then then like when you kind of finished all your course, like you for a long time were just freelancing, right? Oh you, actually no, you were no. working. Yeah, yeah, I was working. In Selfridges and No, so before that, remember it was Gatwick? Yeah. Remember you used to call wow. me on my lunch time? Yeah, I remember. Mm. So I was at there. I was I was at Gatwick and I was working for my first ever like makeup counter job was Benefit Cosmetics. Do you remember? Obviously, I hated it. But then I so then I got a job at Dior. Hated it even more because it was so aged and I was so like young and chilled. how insane is that that you were like working for Dior at that time when you're just coming up? Yeah, and now you're like a Dior influencer. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Like by but like global Dior come to you for advertising mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's sick that's so you sick you just don't you know what you don't think of these things of course yeah and you're so humble like you're just like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, even to this day i'm just like yeah like because you i just don't i never visioned it so for me it's just a bit like but that's what makes your success comes. so like beautiful because everything's just like you don't have the huge expectations no yeah you know like you're confident about who you are and what mm. you do but but it's good because then when you lose or something goes bad you're not 
defeated mm-hmm. and when something goes right like yeah it's it's great but you're not like so attached to it that like it makes it like the most incredible thing ever and then you lose you lose like value of everything else you know you have a nice way of balancing everything in your mind yeah i feel like the only thing i would feel really like sad by or like disheartened by is my own line does that make sense like as in because right now i'm in collaboration with companies and it's like that's all fun and games and that's all experience and that's like oh my god i got to work with this person i got to meet this person and it's all fun so it's like i don't take it too seriously because that's just part of life you meet people and you you grow um but if i like when i get to a stage when it's like to do with my stuff i think it's going to be more serious and i'd be a bit more like stern about it and i think i'd be sad if it went wrong that's I, the only time also because you put so much into it as well yeah you're saying you put time you put money into it like how much things are you gonna waste you know and when you were doing like well you're kind of freelancing well you, did you start freelancing while you were at those jobs like what made you wanted to no. think even get the confidence to do that because I felt like that's the only thing I was good at. I was really good at painting faces, my own, other people's. And I and also I enjoyed it. Like I could sit there for hours and just create a look till this day. So I think the reason why I left those jobs is because I got fed up of retail. I got fed up of how they treat people in retail. Um, I didn't like the bitchy atmosphere. I didn't like the egos. I hated having a boss. Um, yeah, some bad ones. I kind, yeah, um, I kind of feel like it's just the entire vibe. Like, I, I guarantee that if I, sp- I spoke to a few girls now, they would say exactly the same thing as me, okay? They'd probably agree because every girl goes through this on counter. Um, for me especially, I just can't handle it. I just can't take it. I just want to have fun. And obviously, some people are jobs worth. They take things so seriously. So for me, at one point, it was just enough. And I knew that at every job, I just didn't have the gut leave is it is it because you also like i get that because I, I i could be the same yeah yeah but yeah you literally wanted to be like why are you taking life so seriously to all these people who are like i've got so mad about you going to a toilet remember yeah <laughs> they'd be like I'd, I'd have to it's like like school i'd be like so, so can i go to the toilet and then yeah. she'd be like you have to go in five minutes that's crazy and i'm just like oh for god's sake but i'd get in i would get in a lot of trouble for things i would do and but to be fair i was really like cheeky you got sacked um, from a couple of them jobs as well, i, I totally got sacked i remember i got sacked off nas but my mom's so mad because i admitted it obviously but um with nas i actually really wanted to leave and when i spoke to my mom about leaving she was like you better not like you have left way too many jobs shaz until you figured out something you're not leaving but I already knew in my gut and my mind I was going to do yeah. it. So I was like, the only way to do this is to get sacked. So just don't do your job, Shaz. And I was on probation. So now I thought, okay, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to get sacked. So I'm at work. I'm not doing my work. I'm chilling. I'm walking off counter, going, going to top shop. If this is in Selfridges. Um, going to top shop, doing some shopping, getting caught. Just not, just not doing anything, basically. And then I remember I had got a phone call. I had a meeting. They were super bitchy about it. I remember it was like a two managers. One of the managers totally didn't like me from day one. So that was like super fair. The other one I actually worked with in a different company. Um, but he, I mean, he was cool. But like I said, they grow such an ego when they like go in high positions. So I already knew the atmosphere was going to be super bitchy. And in the meeting, I remember them talking to me and I just wasn't answering. I was kind of happy with the outcome. <laughs> and then they were like, you don't even seem bothered. And I was like, yeah, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. <laughs> and, then, even more. and then they were just like, <laughs> like, what is she on? Do you know what I mean? But from that day onwards, I I got Instagram. That was it. But do you think they, they also like that because of how they might have been treated coming up? So now, now they're in that position. Or do you reckon it's just like a, a beauty industry thing? Like t- the attitude thing? No, look, everyone in the beauty industry wants to be on top. Mm. Everyone wants to be the most beautiful. Everyone wants to be the most just like just on top, really, especially Mm. in management, especially in retail. Mm. Everyone wants to grow into these things. So once you got that and if that's like your aim in life, then you're going to take that shit so seriously, right? You're going to take it like you own the brand. Um, And also it's kind of like, oh, I pay you to do the job. So if anything, I've got so much on you. Yeah. And, and I've never taken life like that. I'm like, actually, you kind of need me too. That's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why you put the job online and that's why I'm here. Um, 
so I, I take it as like it's 50 50 like don't treat someone like shit just because they're like under you mm, kind of. of course of course yeah and then when, when you started it, you so after you're like okay boom but i had instagram then remember you had, like, so many but it wasn't grow it wasn't like fully grown yeah i just um i had it but i didn't do the money that's why i went to nas and i that's why i also worked in Superdrug, if you remember yeah yeah i remember that that was yeah. the time yeah we were speaking then you went to what yeah i remember that and your lunch breaks would call me that's when we were yeah. engaged, babe. We were engaged at mm-hmm. the time. Engaged. Wow. We was engaged through Superdrug and Nas. Wow. Mm, both, because I left both. I yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. I but hated Superdrug. Oh my God, kill me. Yeah, I remember you do that. I couldn't get like, on with anyone again because but, we have different mindsets. But how incredible was it when, like, I remember when you got your first hundred likes. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God, do you remember? I was so excited. Uh, no, but it was even like... 78 likes I got. Yeah. It was around an odd number. I remember it was either 69 or 78. I was like, oh my God, I've got this many likes. So many That's people so liked it. Do you know what? I remember also thinking like, when when you used to get double the amount of likes in the minutes mm-hmm. you posted mm-hmm. so you post for two minutes and you've got four likes it's like okay that's like double yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you yeah, get to yeah, like yeah. 10 minutes and 20 likes it's like alright and then you started just like 78, 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. so like, boom like and I don't think you really got in at a time when like you could get that growth and Instagram was exposing people like letting them grow yes, yes. you know what I mean like and so much was going on and, uh-huh. and I think it was also a time where it was like this new thing it's like oh wow like you could just share your looks like so easily. It was just on, and it was just photos at the time, mm-hmm. basic filters. Um, but you also did it in a way, again, like with anything, you didn't take it so seriously. You know, you didn't like try and make everything perfect. Mm-hmm. You were just like, hey, let me just be me. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had a conversation once outside your house, it was raining. And when all this you were doing, and I think it was might still be working at the time. And we spoke and I was like, man, like this would be amazing for you to do this Instagram thing. And you know, like you don't know where it could go. I remember yeah. like just uh, speaking to you about it, and then you were also speaking to me at the time because you're going for a lot of like uh, a dark stage, like with mm-hmm. anxiety and your depression. Mm-hmm. And you were like, "Yeah, well, if I can, you know, use this as an outlet, you know, to show girls, you know, that you don't have to let this like kind of get you, yeah. you know, and you can use beauty to kind of like define who you are, like in terms of like you know, give yourself confidence mm-hmm. and and that angle. I think you've kept till now. Yes, like you're all about making other people feel good mm. using your makeup and the your ability to create these looks to you know empower other girls you yeah. know and, and, and also like the emotional side of it of like you're, you're really connected to like the emotions that girls go through right yeah. because there's so many of these things that girls don't speak about yes at all so i think you, you provide some sort of like representation for them in some sense i feel like it kind of made me who i am today because if I didn't go through that bad time, um, if I didn't go through the bad time and the anxiety and like the, the depression and stuff, then I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be in this situation now. And I, the reason why I got Instagram was so I could kind of get out of my comfort zone. I could accept myself for who I am. I also went through a paranoid, a paranoid stage. I mean, when, when you go through anxiety and depression, like you go through like interesting like the mental stuff so for me par- being paranoid was one of them like you'd, you'd create scenarios in your head that didn't exist right mm-hmm. yeah mm. and i also thought like people were out to get me so that's why i didn't want instagram social media I I, so there was there was quite a few like mental things i i kind of had to break through so that was, so, that was really sad because seeing you at that like really like raw and low point yeah you know it was because even at time we like were just getting to know each other again because mm-hmm. by the way when Shaz and I knew each other we were like friends for a year yeah. and then we stopped speaking for like three years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know it was just like a cold cut off like we just thought you know what's best for us to not talk to each other yeah and you know I went my own li- way had to like go through life Shaz went you know moved away to Manchester yeah. but then now we'd come back and my mom was unwell my mom was going through cancer at the time and like Shaz was almost like a shoulder to lean on in some senses yeah and then like she was going through a lot in her life and that, I think that's the part which I was like, wow, like, because you, you let me see the absolute bare side of you. Yeah. To just your emotion. You tell me your fear. You, you literally say, hey, like, I'm scared that this is going to happen to me because I think that I would have done this. And it's like, whoa, like, I, I knew that it was your mind playing tricks on you. Yeah. But it was so nice to have that. I, I, I felt like the best way for me to, like, um, show you who I am mm. was to try and get you through that. You know, because yes. if I could get you through, or at least help you overcome that 
part of your life mm -hmm. and then we'll get married. Yeah. It was like, man, like how much, like so much you go through when you're married. But if you can get through so those much, things, yeah. you know what I mean? I feel like that's why we're such good friends as such, like in our marriage. Because if I, I think if we didn't have that little friendship before our like wedding and get to know each other so deep, so quickly mm. then we wouldn't be where we are right now yeah. like together do you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. like most people find that in marriage right i mean we're still finding each other in like different ways and stuff but as in like you know like i could say the craziest thing to you you blow like, oh, it's just shaz yeah. do you know what i mean which is nice and you have that kind of balance with each other like you yeah that is incredible actually yeah mm. you really get to the smaller things like you you get to really appreciate where they came from you know yeah, like yeah, when yeah. i see the evolution in your character you're, or you even use a mum, man. Like, it's so amazing. Because I, I literally, I'll just sit there sometimes. I'll just watch you and see, and I'll be like, man, like, alhamdulillah. Like, it's so nice to know that from the conversation we would used to have yeah. three, four years ago to now, like, you sitting there and being just like this, just a, such a strong figure for, like, mm -hmm. this girl who's growing up now. You know what I mean? She's so cute. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really, really incredible that you got that. But you know what's crazy? Is like, do you remember when I would say I didn't, I didn't want to have children? Mm -hmm. You were like, I'm never having kids. Yeah. I was, and obviously to some people that's going to be like, hold on a minute. Every people want yeah, yeah. want like to have kids and stuff, and I was a person who didn't. Doesn't mean I didn't appreciate. Do you know what I mean? To some people who go through things, and I get that. Um, I think falling pregnant was the hardest thing for me, wasn't it? Like because when I was pregnant, I was so shocked, and I was like, I'm going to be a mom, and I just and I didn't even picture myself being a mom. So for the whole nine months of Sienna's pregnancy. I was kind of shit. So un myself. unexpected as well. Like we got we were married four months. Yeah, only four months, right? Yeah. And we didn't we did I feel like we didn't well at the time when I was pregnant, the reason why I think I was so sad and stuff is because I felt like we didn't have enough marriage as such. Yeah. Um like together and alone time. And then I was like, I never wanted to be the mum in the first place, although that sounds ungrateful. At the time my mental state was that. Yeah. And then then as soon as Sienna arrived, my whole life changed. Well, the, it, even and now the, I love being a mom. You're the best mom, man. Trust me. I love it. It's actually the funniest yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah she, she, I really you, see her, you see her personality like become like you. So she <laughs> She's becomes so your friend. like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, even during that pregnancy, like mm -hmm. you, that was a whole new low. Oh. Remember? Mm, can, you, can you tell me, please? That was know, mad. That was crazy. Like, like you, I remember uh, I was like, like literally crying my eyes out. I remember the day it all happened. I was at office, it was at office, Samir was here, you was running for a meeting. For the, so for seven days prior to that, I was feeling low and I remember saying to her, I feel low, but it wasn't like, it was, it was like it was just coming up, like mm. building up. Um, I didn't know what it was, I was trying to brush it off, brush it off, right? And then we were all at the office, we were doing like work, again, I was trying to stay busy, like you kept telling me to stay busy and I was like, yeah, that's fine. Everyone finished the up at the office. It was getting dark outside. Mm. Me and Samir then got an Uber back to ours. Um, I said bye to Samir. Samir. I said bye to Samir. Went upstairs. Yeah, I remember him texting me saying that she's not looking too good. You know, because I said to him in the car, I feel sad. Yeah. He and I didn't want to tell him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I didn't want to, I don't know, what, what was happening was I could feel my tears come up in the, in the Uber, right? But because I didn't know why I was crying, I didn't want to say anything. I felt crazy. The moment I left the Uber, got in the lift and went up to our flat, I, I remember just standing in the front door and I was like, okay, Saba's coming, which she was. She was coming to collect some makeup. Uh. Shaz, just do some cleaning, do the washing or something. Stay busy. Omar's going to be here in like half an hour, right? Saba's going to be here in like 10 minutes max. I remember going towards the counter. There was magazines. I went to straighten them. That was it. I was, I burst into tears. Again, I have no reason as to why I did it. I don't even know why I did it. Saba comes over with Issa mm. at the time. Um, I didn't want to act like I was crying. So I was like, Saba, give me a second. So I went to the bathroom, cried in the bathroom a little bit by myself. Tried to get myself together. Um kind of pulled it together again still I could feel it in my throat because I couldn't stop it I remember when you came in and I said can I speak to you I pulled you into the bathroom and then I was yeah, break that was the time it all changed yeah 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 and that's when I think it was a wake-up call for me to be like okay because even before like you tell me I got anxiety and I just I understood anxiety because I've been through it 
but I also know it's like a mental ba- battle. Yeah, so yeah, I thought, yeah. you know what, it's fine. Like, you know, like we'll just distract ourselves. We'll mm-hmm. keep busy. We'll talk about it. And we used to talk a lot about, you know, just there's a lot of times it was just fears. But at that, that point, it was like an actual physical manifestation of it. It was like, okay, now this is really taking over and like almost destroying you in a sense. And you had a baby on the way, you know, so all of that on top of it. And it kind of forces you have to have to be even stronger as a husband as well. Because, you know, it's heartbreaking to see your wife go through that. You know, you don't want to see anyone you love go through pain. And when you're looking at that, all you're trying to think of, as a guy, you just try to fix everything. So you're like, okay, let me solve this. Let me fix this. What can I do? And it was tough because at the beginning, I didn't want to tell my mom to die because I didn't mm. want my parents to worry. Mm. So it's like, I didn't want my parents or my family to worry. I only wanted you to know about it and maybe a close friend. Yeah. And then, um, but then slowly I kind of had to tell my mom, I remember, because it got too much. Yeah. But it was good. That was a good move though. Because she's, I think that yeah, was, was a turning point move, in your relationship with your sure. mom. Yeah, we had to, yeah, I think that really did help. And then obviously like it, she understood pregnancy. There was, obviously that's prenatal. I'm sure it's called prenatal depression when you get it inside, like yeah. when you're pregnant. Um, and I think she understood that I had it really bad. Mm. Nothing could, nothing could fix it. Like nothing could fix my tears. It was just time. Wasn't it just time? Like it, it was really was just time. Like it just took time, you know. Oh my God. It took, and, and every, remember you say to you every day, am I ever going to feel normal? Yeah, I said every day and then I used to say to you in the car babe like even like now like you're just probably driving listening to music and you're like j- thinking normal stuff like why can't I think normal stuff like yeah. I remember you used to question my thoughts like why am I thinking such sad things like and then I used to ask you what you're thinking like just to see if like we're on the same page I know. and then you used to be like babe don't think about it you have to like but you know what it is babe, because those those thoughts are I used to then tell you the thoughts that I used to have as well. And then when you told me your thoughts, it's because the things you're thinking, you think are so insane that no one thinks them. But you'd be surprised. This is why they have things such as counseling mm. and why you go into like these places where other people are going through similar things. Mm. Because everyone can freely express what they're thinking. You'd be surprised at how many people think the same thing. Mm. So like, remember I used to tell you, I used to like sometimes think that what if like I jumped out of a window at my nan's flat? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I would literally open the window and think to myself like, what if I, because you could fully extend it mm-hmm. and it was eighth floor. And I mean, like, fi- first of all, can't, why can you fully extend You can't that? anymore. Okay. At that time you could. This was right, like five dangerous. years, six years, not that long ago. Okay. Imagine the kids were that time. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> that would like, I'll, but I really think to myself, like what would happen? Yeah. Like that, like I can physically do it. Mm. And then once I like threw something out the window, like just something small, like maybe like tissue or something, I just watched it fall. I was like, okay, that fell. All right, so let me see how long it takes to hit the ground. Okay, and I was recalculating in my head, like what it'd be like to like jump out. Like it was so weird. And now you told me like, you know this, and you told me what you were going through mm-hmm. thinking. I was like, and it, cause there's a lot of crazy things. Like, you know, there's people that just think, we all are victims of our own thoughts sometimes. You know? I feel like people are so afraid like to say what they want to say because they're going to come across crazy. And I remember I used to say that, didn't I? I used to be like, nope, can't tell anyone. I'm going to come across as a psychopath and then I'm going to be I mean, in I a mental me. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I said, I'm going to get arrested. I'm going to be in a mental home. Um, and maybe that's why I'm so open to talking about anything. Because I just think, do you know what? No one's going to arrest anyone. Everyone has freedom of speech, mm. freedom of thought. And in a way, it's kind of good to just get it out. Because when you're trapped inside, like you, you, it's so dangerous because you know you end up doing like statement things, you know, like, because you, when you get so like, you're dying for a cry for help, yes. you know? And in your head, you're thinking all of these things that you'd love to do to get out of a situation. Yeah, like you could be in an oppressive marriage. Yeah. You, it could be in-laws. Mm-hmm. It could be, you know, various circumstances, your work. But all you think of is like, okay, what's the most dramatic thing I could do to like get me out of this because you can't think of any way to wake up another day and do that again. Right. And then sometimes it's sad because some people go through statement situations where like they say statement suicide or you know, where you do something that's like just to make a noise, you know, just to get almost as a cry for help. Yes. But it was lucky in kind of your sense that, you know, you had a a form of expression, you know, you could speak to your mum then, you had Mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. you know. So do you think like, being able to like really talk about your emotions openly yep. without judgment mm-hmm. is what got you through it mostly. Yes. Um, I think Instagram in a really strange way as well, my social media helped me because it's like so many people started relating to me mm. and I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only person, not the only girl, the crazy one. Um, it also made me stronger because you obviously get like trolls on Instagram who then be like kind of 
like give you shit for being the way you are um so it's kind of like I learned to be strong at the same time I learned to be relatable at the same time and then I felt like I'm not even alone the whole time you know even till this like till now like I speak to some people and they're always like Shaz like you know watch what you say a little bit or you know don't do this and um but I just know that this is just who I am I love and I, I you know it's okay to speak your mind. It's okay to say crazy things because the, the truth is we're all crazy in the world. And that's, that's the thing, fine. like even everyone is human. Yeah. You know, like even this entire thing, like you, you, you put up last week about like brands wanting to like work Absolutely, with Absolutely, yeah. You know, that's like, it's all these people trying to do what, and like everyone's trying to do these things that like they want a uh, kind of approval from others. Yeah. Like brands want to work with you because you have to fit an agenda. And it's like, man, like, and I really like i always encourage you as well to just to do what is feel that freedom for you you know and you really express that like you, you say no to so many things when they could be the most incredible like almost feat for you to achieve yeah but you're like no like that's not who i am and you're trying to change me i think it's so the, the post i did that last week meant a lot to me because mm. i think i kept it in for quite a while i mean i've been working on my instagram for i don't know how long and that's yeah. my business at the moment um but yeah, that was just enough. I was just thought, you know what? There's so many girls out there that are trying and we can't because we're not bougie enough. Sorry, yeah. you know? You know what? Maybe I don't have the best backdrop or maybe I don't have the best lighting or whatever you're looking at. I don't know. Maybe I can't afford the best camera at the, at, at the time. Um, and then because of that, I can't work with you because I haven't got like all these things, you know? Well, tough shit. Well, your page isn't a certain design. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I'm not perfect. But you know what? I don't think you are either. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. behind closed doors. You're just not showing that. I'm not afraid to show who I am because none of this is going to last for me forever. Like, there's going to be a day where I drop dead. What's my Insta Instagram page going to be? It's just a page, isn't it, really? It's not going to do shit. And, and if anything, I feel like this would leave, leave more of a legacy. This would leave my children... Like knowing how like real and honest their mum were. Like there's so much more to my pays than just the money. Yeah. So it's like I'd rather make money in the way that I enjoy and I don't need to like hold a Chanel bag. I, don't, I just don't see the point. Mm. I don't get it. I still don't and I never will. It's true, man. Still yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. aren't you? No, no, no. You're lost in thought. No, because You're I because understand uh, it, aren't you? No, no, I do understand it, but I know that so many people do will do the opposite. You know, because of but what they've so because many people of, who like yeah. have to organize their pages for brands. And I get that maybe yeah. they've got like agencies they work for. I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't got like a boss. Who, again, I can't have a boss. So um, maybe that's why I'm who I am. I mean, even if I did, I think we'd clash and I'd have to like quit. But as in, there's so many people who live for that lifestyle. And you know what? It's actually become a thing, isn't it? It's like people look at other people's Instagram pages and they're like, oh God, I just wish I had. You know, oh my god, I wish I had these bags yes. and these and this jewelry and these shoes. And that and creates more anxiety and issues because you start how thinking do I you have this FOMO. This? Yeah, exactly. How did they get all this money? Babe, I don't own one design handbag, yeah. okay? One yeah, reason, yeah, yeah. right? First of all, I see that money as like such a huge deal. It's like I'd rather spend that on something that I would actually love, not just one stupid product with a name on it. Yeah. Does it make sense? I'm not gonna spend fifteen hundred pounds on a bag when I could do get like a nice bed or something to yeah, sleep yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And right now I'm not in a place it's some like I said, some people are, have made it, like you see Beyonce and she's like, Okay, well what she wants. That's cause like she's made it into like whatever she has. But I'm not gonna fake a lifestyle like yeah just for the sake you know, of that, that would, yeah and you have a lot more longevity with what you're doing because like you're saying it builds more of a legacy yeah like people there's more also meaning become, to it. yeah people become attached to you and your meaning yeah you're, per, you're who you are as a person yeah, yeah, yeah not like it's not you're you're not playing the game the system of likes and ads and mm -hmm. money and you know is that's what everyone's trying to do well a lot of people is i like, just play the game yeah you know okay if we do this post like this Da, 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 and then brand A comes in and it's like man it's a lot of strategy and yeah. I, I feel like I'm, it's making me tired thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> but you just but need to be yourself to yeah. yeah but then also the way you've like taken ownership of what you're doing you know like you're you are very in control like mm -hmm. you know in terms of the people anyone that deals with you know things from a management perspective yeah. anyone that even has authority to like go and get you a deal mm -hmm. like and you are in the meetings as well yeah you know you're physically 
are there. So mm-hmm. do you, <clears throat> is that like a, a, just means a lot to you to make sure that you're, you're represented correctly, like as yourself and you, you like, cause you, you're happy to go into the meetings, express yourself, mm-hmm. be yourself. Like even if there's people that are like more qualified mm-hmm. like on a business level to do it, mm-hmm. you still are like, nah, I need to be here and make sure my voice is heard. Yeah, because I do feel like I need to be represented well and honest. I don't want them to go in and like say things that maybe I'm not happy with. Um, I also, I, I do like being represented and someone being there with me at times because I'm still learning and I don't want to be naive to situations and sometimes I can be and I have been. Mm. Um, so it's like, for me, it's like the reason why I want to be there is because at first I want them to know who they're working with who's who's actually behind the scene you know and if it's actually what they want and second of all yeah I just think it's I think it's important as a brand to represent yourself not just have someone speaking for you yeah. all the time of course and and then now with the stuff you're going to be planning like you 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 know you want to do a lot more of your own I really do yeah. you've been working for a long time yes I don't think we're going to talk too much about what it is and no, what's no. happening. But the fact that you're even like now, you know, trying to figure out how to juggle that. Mm-hmm. Being a mom, now going to be a second. Have a second mom. Second mom. It's going to be crazy. So scared. I know. Like you my know life's going to be over, though. isn't it? No, really? Not, Let's man. be honest. Okay. We'll be all right. Yeah. It's, t- it's tough. It's challenging though. Of course it is. Like you can't, like we speak so many times about this. You can't predict the perfect life you know you can't sit there and write out okay i'm gonna do this at this age and this and i'm gonna launch my business here and it's gonna grow this much like you're just going through everything and the most beautiful thing is i look at these incredible like beings we've got to watch happen you know what i mean like i'm it's so nice to know that when these things happen for you inshallah like me sienna our new baby like they'll all grow up and i will be there you know what i mean that's so much so and your parents it's so much more meaningful that okay like they all got to see the journey with you, you yeah. know, like seeing that evolution in you is so much better than just like, I don't know, just being like f- sacrificing everything to work on that. Because like you said, like when you die, like what's the legacy you're li- leaving? Like what are people going to remember you for? And Sienna will see this hard work. You know, I see that hard work. I see all the sacrifices, the small things, you know, the tough things. Like she's so attached to you. She yet so is. You have to go for evening meetings, you know, I know. to work around me sometimes, you yeah. know, you have to like, yeah, you have evening events with the, the the industry you're in. You know, there's a lot of cross section things you have to do, which like take a toll mm. on like your kids. But it's you, what you do really well is for everything that you have to like sacrifice, you like double down really hard on like the attention you pay. Yeah. Like you're very active as a mother, mm. as a wife. Mm. You know, you're very present. Like you know everything. You're like so I think they have a control freak. But it's good though because yeah. you're not like lost in the cloud. Like you you somehow managed to balance this like like huge like kind of thing with like all these all these like deals and everything you've got going on with your brand and running it your mm-hmm, instagram mm-hmm. and then like being full on with our family mm-hmm. your parents you speak to them all the time I you know what yeah. i mean so like you, you, you don't that's more important to me i think that's that's what it is but, but it's difficult it's a tough thing to do to balance with that it is and i think that's why sometimes i have these like mental breakdowns yeah. <laughs> the other night you don't. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that was so bad yeah i needed to lay that out babe it, right. it had to happen it happens. um <clears throat> but i feel like that's part of my journey now yeah. like i again i couldn't predict this could yeah. i predict i was gonna be a mom of two no like let alone a mom of one i thought i genuinely thought when we got married I must have been so immature to think this, but I, yeah, I thought business, money, travel. Let me just create all these platforms for myself. Yeah, and then, then God's like, okay, you can have a kid, Shaz, <laughs> and you're gonna be really sad for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know the value of that stuff until like it plays out. Yeah, you know? it, the, the, look at all the positives that have come out of all of this. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like my life is so much more amazing than what I thought. Uh. I have hard days. I have sleepless nights. You know, Sienna's in madness. Like, this pregnancy is crazy. But I just feel like my life would not be as amazing as it is now if I didn't have any of this. Yeah, it's true. This mess. And this it, mess is nice. The, it's, like an, it's like a controlled chaos. I love it. Like, yeah. Sienna's a whole other chaos herself. No, she's... Okay, she's crazy. Nuts in a bit. Like, last night, I can't take it. You I'm, know, she I'm has this, like, explosive asleep. personality. Like, <laughs> it's just so, like... If anyone like knew a party that. party popper every day. <laughs> Like, you know that party popper, you pull it and it's just like, everything goes everywhere. Yeah. That's how she wakes up. I know. That's okay. 
Let's go. <laughs> she's like, when she gets up in bed, she's like, blah, 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 blah. Go, bum. I'm like, oh, God, we're awake. Map. Yeah. <laughs> it's either go, bum, mab, g- no. Mugger, mum. Mug- yeah, mugger, mum. That's mugum. a good one. It's, it's like mugum, a question, mugum, isn't mugum. it? Mugum, mugum. Migum. <laughs> Migum. <laughs> oh my gum. She asked like it's a question, didn't she? Cuppa, 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 cuppa. Yeah, yeah cuppa, cuppa, cuppa. <laughs> <laughs> Will you give me a cup of what? It's like, I can't even go to a shower in peace. It's like, cuppa, cuppa, cuppa. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, she goes, boom on your face and slaps you. <laughs> like, at night time, she does not slap you. It only slaps me. She comes over and just gives me a slap. The, the, the funniest one was that when she, <laughs> she loaded that up. You know when you like go 360? And what up <laughs> you like the best connect as well. You know when you get a good ha- like can clap? I, I heard that. I was like, boy, like, I can't even I can't tell her off. It's kind of an achievement. Like, I saw it, I was like, judge. Yeah, I mean, I can't even mad at you. <laughs> Pretty good. We were laughing and the worst part is she finds it funny because we find these situations so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then she wants to do it again. I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, I know. But you, you know what the see uh, one and a half, nearly one and a half. Mashallah, to like be that like on stuff, you know, she's very like curious, no, sharp, yeah, like there's a lot sharp, going on yeah. in her mind. You know what I mean, she's an interesting she's human being. Interesting. It's, it's seeing her growth is very interesting, but you can 100% see like how much she's got of like me and you in her, her personality. Oh my god, you know what like, I mean, like the curiosity, the craziness, the like the the, the persistence. No, oh my god, that, that's the worst part. She is like non like i'm getting don't yeah, you get that in my way yeah 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 right which i love i love it but i'm so, we're so gonna have a hard time she's gonna be a tough kid man she's gonna be a tough kid but i but it'll be worth who she becomes absolutely as she grows up like she, yeah she'll be she'll definitely be tough like as she grows up because of like you know she's gonna test us she's gonna like you know push us in certain areas and i like, make us like you have to think on the spot with a kid like that you know like there's no there's no rule book mm. like she'll be throwing things at you like from anywhere like you're like okay how do i deal with this now like it's mm. it's, it's crazy mm. but i think that's why you have to have that friendship and understanding between you as a mom and dad yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. like do make the i know that like any decision you make will be the same decision i would have made it's like you wonder what the next child's gonna be like gonna be like sienna gonna be completely different right you're like I, I'm still so curious as to what that's going to be like. Yeah. Because we've got one. One uh, crazy one. So yeah, our cute children, me and you, and our, you know what it's going to be like? Like, we're the Millers. <laughs> if anyone's seen that. Yeah, we're the Millers is the one. That's the one. That's us. It literally is like that. It's yeah. Stupidness every day. I don't think even anyone's even had, seen us had a cover conversation before. You know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. people that know us. I mean, some do. people have actually wrote sometimes. Like they're wrote, they're right saying, "Do you know more? Even ever speak?" Someone said that one comment of my thing saying, "Hey, do they ever communicate? With, do they only communicate with each other on, on social, on social media. media?" Like we just, man, it's so funny. I, I, I it's such, it's such a. I think it's because you can see it from one lens, which is like, like when you're following and seeing things yeah, from yeah, that yeah. perspective, and like how open we might be and what we share. Yeah. But then, like. If you spend time with us, it's such a small part. It's like a percent of like what really what really goes on and happens. But that's why people really need to understand it's perspective. That is yeah, and it's also just Instagram. Yeah. Like it's just a picture or it's just a minute of a video or just whatever it is, a story. You you actually not getting to see everything. So just stop assume like you can't assume that much. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't and, assume the whole day. And also whole- like you can't be j- if you see us genuinely, you think you think we're stuck, we're, we're genuinely not like we're gonna go on Instagram, be happy for like those ten seconds straight away. Just sit there, right? yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. Like you, it's like alhamdulillah, man. It's like, you got you got to just be have that energy all the time. You know that when we share it, it's like okay, a snippet of it, but and people probably assume that like I'm this crazy possessive wife yeah i get that a lot like yeah, when, yeah, when we, yeah. go out, we go out and someone take a picture so with funny. one take a picture of me but they're like oh no i don't what's, what's, what's just, okay just, with it? Just, just gonna be okay with that well, yeah. i mean which is quite funny because maybe they should keep an eye on that <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> no i i just feel like don't every sarc- female don't get your sarcasm <laughs> i just feel like every female has that funny side to her obviously some people some females are like super serious and are crazy yeah but I mean, you really wouldn't have married me if I was like that, babe. You're so chill. Uh, do you, do you, do you, do you find it funny, right? I'd be really interested to like 
hear like the perspective of like based on what we put out what someone would think a house is like <laughs> like i'm probably so abusive to you you're like, you're like, right you're like verbally destroying me every second of every day yeah yeah yeah. don't let you do anything yeah, and i just sit there quietly like on my laptop or something yeah yeah like, yeah don't talk to anyone and just me and sienna shaz is just yeah i think they think i'm super crazy sienna's just this happy cute kid and then you're just like quiet guy who just takes all my shit <laughs> just lives in the kitchen <laughs> yeah. yeah have my little Shout tent in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's another that's thing so i get as well like i never cook but i don't i feel like we work so well hand in hand yeah, yeah, yeah of course that it's like i don't yeah i don't enjoy cooking this is i've openly said it but it's like you love it you're amazing it and i totally love cleaning yeah. so it's kind of like you make all the mess Did you clean it up? And I clean it up no but also they, there's a you know that when you say you like you bought a home like in a family you're doing it's all relative to you you know like everyone has a uh, there's no definition of what should and shouldn't be done yeah based on this rule book like People anything that comes out that comes from traditions mm. of like it, a man would go out and do manly things and hunt and get the food and get the money and uh, come home and the food you know what i mean like tr i'm talking tribal traditional like mm. and then over the years it's like okay like a woman assumes a role and a man assumes a role but like yes there's things that are a man would do because of his innate abilities yeah, you know absolutely. what i mean of being a man yeah. and same with a woman like you have a motherly instinct that's like a, a guy could never i can never have that motherly instinct mm -hmm. like the way you think and you you're connected with like uh, sienna's emotions mm -hmm. it's like whoa like, that's mad mm -hmm. but it's so difficult for me to get that i have to like think about logic you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah so then when it comes down to yes again like in that same respect your home is like your, your own thing you know like you figure out what works for you and you communicate you have to just it's not like i'm there like oh, i have to cook otherwise you know what i mean like, <laughs> gonna, like, no, yeah. maybe they think that um <laughs> no but i feel like everyone's home is different you can't even give marriage advice because every single person's marriage is so different yeah, it's tough man it's tough it's tough and that's it's why not gonna it, work yeah. for everyone mm. our marriage our home isn't gonna work for everyone else yeah other people like you know, would love for us to give them advice. I think that's such a tough thing to do because it's really not going to work for the whole world. The, the basis of it, uh, if I talk about our like situation and what makes things easier, and it's so cliche, but it's so communication, mm -hmm. you know, just like, just not being afraid to say something yeah. and saying it, you know, like, whatever it is like okay i feel like this or maybe we should do this or like when you're fed up of something say it mm -hmm. you've always done it really well like you've been very blunt with me like from early on you know yeah. i said hey like i don't think this is cool or yeah. you know you should try this but then like kind of give that person time to develop mm -hmm. you know not just like every second of every day again and again and again it's like okay like communicate step back yeah you know and that like works well because if you're with the right person they'll really appreciate like your word because they want to they know you're going to be you're going to live in with them and you don't want to like cause issues you know like if something upset yeah you're going to have disagreements but then you very have to quickly have to be able to understand their disagreements not just be argumentative all the time and then like okay figure out what's going on you know i think i need to be willing to listen to each other i do right? think women in general yeah i do think women in general like are hot-headed i yeah. think that's just female but all of them, i was speaking to you about my nan just then like oh like my sister was there, my cousin, my brother. Like we were all sitting there, we we're like, yeah, like all girls. Females, genuinely. Yeah, have that. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have that little strike. But then because guys, think. guys can also be hot headed. So if a guy doesn't understand that a female is coming from an emotion point of view, or yeah. like it's just a momentary thing, or understand the context, like because you you can't get mad. If I got mad every time that you got like slightly frustrated about something, like you'd say something like you never put the bins out, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And most girls will say stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You never do this. Mm -hmm. And as a guy, you're like, bro, because you know like how much you do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I always do it. Like <laughs> one time I did it, it became never. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, I, but, and you can't argue because like, nope, like you never do this. Then it's like a whole list of things you never do. It's like, bro, like you never breathe. You never, <laughs> you know what? Just can't be with you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it. And that's it. The bin was the last straw. <laughs> This, this, but women I'll just do it myself it. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we do, right? I'll I'm the, I'll I'm be the, the queen lady. of that. I'll be the queen. <laughs> I'm the best at that, right? Yeah. I'm always like, do you know what? Don't even touch the hoovering now. No. I said it. Yeah. I will do it myself. <laughs> I'll just hold the rubbish in my hand all day. <laughs> but we just, I just feel like that. That is just girls. In the doghouse, you're sitting there like. <laughs> 
Let me out. <laughs> no, but girls are like this, babe. I know. And men just have to accept it. The same way we have to accept men. I know. We're crazy too. Like, no, no. You could just be like sh- do stupid things to wind us up like girls don't have that patience and yeah. we just we have that switch where it's like so if i asked you to do the bin i kind of expected it then like yeah, i don't yeah. expect it 20 minutes later yeah. but you, you guys are chill they're like oh i'm gonna do it you know and i'm like okay that's gonna, that's gonna put me in bad mood yeah i've learned not to do that <laughs> yeah, i remember i was being like, okay i'm gonna i uh, will okay yeah yeah it's yeah. like you have to build this library in your like, head of things that like Cause you know, like you're by when you're by yourself or not married, everything's on your terms, your rules, and you're only ever like battling with yourself. So if you mess something up, you're not gonna go in the mirror and like, have a go at yourself and yeah. be like, "Oh, you did it again." You never like you'd be like, "All right, cool, I'm gonna fix it up." You know what I mean? And you get on with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. but when you're in a marriage, living with someone, it's like those things are like with someone else. So like, if for instance, like if I don't shut the bathroom door because Sienna will go in and mess it up, you know what I mean? Which so annoyed me. Right. Yeah. But if like to me, if I did that, it was like, all right, cool, fine. Like get her out. It's annoying, but like no one's gonna tell me off. But when you're with someone, you got you got to add that to your library of things that you have to like keep in check. You know what I mean? But like, okay, don't do that because this will happen. And like you know, she'll get in there, and you just like you have this whole like thing of like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do I think it's harder even just with a kid. Yeah. Like when you're just you and your husband, you you know it's not, it's yeah, not that where, much of a there's yeah. no hazards. Like it's not that much of a thing, yeah. but. Like with Sienna, for instance, like the toilet paper, the soap. Like there's just crazy things that we, yeah, that maybe yeah, that's what yeah. makes me And as a kid gets older, there's like more, more and more things that like you can't help. Like they climb on chairs. They're gonna, there's no height they can't get to. The TV's on the wall. She pulls a wire. The whole thing comes down. <laughs> she gets on the sofa, thinks you're going to save every time she jumps off. <laughs> the flat first. Yeah, Boom. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> One time I didn't save it. It was so sad. Not that I didn't mean to save it. I was in like, I didn't see it coming. And then by that time she hit the floor and she was crying her eyes out. And I was like, babe, like, what do you think you're doing? Like, you're not going to make it. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and she's you know? back up again. Then like, she wants to do it again. Okay, yeah. let me try it again. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this time she'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so stupid. She's like, hey, you, I'm about to do this <laughs> thing. But <Better> catch me. <laughs> she's like going straight forward. <laughs> Because we, uh, I'm going. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's oh, so too slow. Annoying. Okay. <laughs> I just really want her to stop doing that. It's so annoying. It's stressing my life. Okay, next time I'll wait to cry. <laughs> See if you've noticed <laughs> that I even fell in the first place. She's a fool and she's Listen, lying there. Babe, she I mean, like, is. Ten seconds later. Ah. No, but she's so good at faking it. Yeah. Like the other day, do you remember? Like she yeah, yeah. tripped over, everything was great. And you and she didn't care because you were there. But the moment I thought, because I thought she hurt herself. I said, baby, you okay? She went, oh, <laughs> and came on it back. It starts hurting her head. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, but you, were, I actually just saw you were fine. Yeah. You're such a liar. Mug. Absolute. So your uh, pregnancies, I think, is an interesting thing to speak oh about. God, because so many people are asking mm, on pregnancy and labor. Yeah. That was a, that was a whole other headache. We got we got an amazing Alhamdulillah result out of it, but the yeah. process was like going to a battleground. Do you know why? Because I feel like your first ever child, you don't know what to expect. Mm. You don't even know the little bits to it. Mm. We don't know what what do we know? I, I knew nothing. Mm. We had to go with the flow, and I think that was the problem. That's the problem for most people, well for me anyway, because I like to know what's going to happen. And when you're going to labour, you have no idea what's happening. There's so many like possible outcomes. We switched hospitals in between your contractions. I hate the first hospital. I actually wanted Remember, to I almost cry. had a car accident outside. Remember? Yeah, that was outside the second and hospital. And you were on the side of the car. So like, imagine a car. Yeah, baby, that was like the first hospital. First hospital, yeah. yeah. Yes. And then we went, yeah, it was like, it was literally like, a, like, you know, in like a war zone when they have like a <laughs> infirmary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like that. Babe, it was so bad. And then I felt so bad for the lady who was in labor next to us. She was just so sad. She was being sick and they made her husband clean it up. Yeah, and she Not, was oh, in no, pain. It was just crazy, man. It was just, it was just a level of care. Was I, I, and they didn't care. like Because I, I had kidney stones while mm. while I was in labor. And then I was like, my kidney stones hurt so much. Obviously, they do, right? Well, for those who have experienced it. Obviously, I didn't know I was, that was going to happen. The moment I'm going to labor, I get kidney stones. And I was like, it really hurts. Is there anything you can give me to just ease the pain? And do you remember she was like, well, you haven't felt contractions yet. Oh yeah, so I remember her. You shouldn't even worry about this. I was like, so oh my God, how can you care? Like, 
it's my first time, you know? Like Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you try to be empathetic and you're like, okay, well, they're dealing with hundreds of women. Yeah, like, day. everyone's giving Everyone's birth. in pain. And also, like, it's like when a baby cries, it's like, oh, I can't get... imagine like a, a hundred of them a day you listen to and everyone's saying the same thing, you know? So, like, yeah, from a woman's point of view, like, we can never understand how tough it is. It's probably the worst thing. It is the worst thing, like, you can go through pain wise. But then from their point of view, like they're human and they're trying to deal with it and they have tempers, you know. But yeah, you're right. Because I, I, the second hospital went to, but then you know, like, don't so. have the job. You can't be a midwife yeah. and, you, and and not like be emotionally there. Yeah, it's very your tough, job man. every day is to act excited about every baby that comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your job every day is to be like, oh my god, this is your girl. Like, and they see it all every the time. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, every baby, every same, baby. Same reaction. Yeah, yeah. Just like, an, how many do today? Ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It must be mad having that type of job as well. Like you just, uh, I, I could just, I can't even sit. I don't know how I'm gonna sit through the next one. Like that one was tough as well. I don't know how they do all Babe, of them. Babe, you are the worst birth partner. I, know, I might as well just be at home and. We just wait for it. Text me. Send me notifications when you're done. Send you a little screenshot. <laughs> Let me sc- <laughs> FaceTime me. Yeah, I'll FaceTime me. Because like even when I want you to be there, you're not there. It's so like, where's Omar? We're just over here. They're like, they're like, okay, like why don't you like fan her down like the cooler? And I was like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you couldn't uh, even do that. You were not even like at the space where it was all happening. You were literally just at my face. I know, it's so tough. Why did that? Why was that so tough? You know what it is? Because it's such a. How do I explain it? Let me look, there's so much going on here visually. Yeah. Number one. Number two, it's like you kind of just want to let the professionals deal with it because yeah. you feel like you like I am not qualified in any sense to be in that room, you know? So the only thing you can be there for is that moral support. Which you weren't. Which is tough. Yeah, because yeah. When, you're, when you're screaming and you're like in pain and like you're tired and all this stuff going on and like, all, it's literally hearing so many things like going on at one time. The only thing you care about, the one thing you care about is I want her to be alive and I want the baby to be healthy and alive. Yeah. That's all I want. I want to hear the baby cr- crying after her, and I want to hear my wife crying after her. <laughs> like, I just want those, you know what I mean? And then once they're both crying, I know it's fine and I can cry. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's such a big relief because when the baby's born and you hear that, you know, okay, the, as soon as she came out, I was like, no, okay, listen, but is she alive? She no, no, but listen, she didn't even cry. Even, she, she was not a crier, was she? She was like, hmm. Yeah. Like, she was just. But you know, you just, it's just such a, uh, and that, 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 I remember if people anything, told me before that it was the moment she came out, you were crying. <laughs> I was, I like, was that's, screaming, yeah. That's Seattle. I've never crying <laughs> like that in my life, though. I've never had those level of. I like, think they were waiting for the baby to cry, and you started. I like, know. Was, See, I was like, <laughs> this <a> guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, from that day, she was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to be the man in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's the way she is now. But so many people told me before that that you, you can never explain what that emotion is. Yeah, you when can't. you have a child. And I think the best way I can explain, I heard two things that made me uh, help me explain it is one, to have a child like when they grow up mm-hmm. is like your heart being outside your body running around and you're trying to catch your heart and put it back in. That, yeah, that's one. But that's when a really cute way. Right. And the, the other one is when a baby's born, it's like you're like a whole new, you know, like what you know about like life and love. Yeah. And everything you know, it's literally like in that moment, uh, like God like, just opens up this whole new layer to your heart and you feel it open like you literally feel your heart expand and your body just overtakes and you're like whoa like it's so overwhelming it's, it's like euphoria on a different level it's just too much it's too the much man, i love her is it, i i can't i, I will yeah, never yeah. be able to explain it Crazy. and the and the moment she came and they put her on my chest and the moment i saw her yeah. i still can't explain that because she was living inside me the whole time. It's crazy to see that, isn't it, for you? Like, not, and then yeah. when she comes out, and I remember kissing it, I remember saying to my mum there and then, Mom, she's so perfect. She's so soft. She's so like her skin oh, was so soft. Yeah, yeah. And then I gave her a kiss on the lips, and I remember she pouted, I pouted her lips oh. to give me a kiss. And I just obviously I kind of wished I was captured, but it was such a moment. Like we. I gave her a kiss and she was there just looking at me with her little perky lips and barely eyes open. Like, oh, it was a, it was a good moment. And I remember straight after that, I went outside and saw my mum and your dad. Yeah. And I was literally like hysterically crying. Oh, were you? Yeah, like I was uh, like sobbing so what much. Was my dad I was, like, saying? I, was just like, like, I was just like, she's so beautiful. Yeah, she's, she's so, so beautiful. Cute, yeah. That's all I kept saying. She's so, she beautiful, so, so beautiful. Yeah, I was like, she's so beautiful. Like, and then I like, bless your dad, like gave me a hug and everything. And it was just like, you're so like bare in that moment and you're, you're so relieved. Yeah. You're so happy. You just want to tell everyone. Like, it's just like such a joyous thing. But then what happened after? 
was like, bro, if we knew that, I would have cut her and like, <laughs> you just stayed, cry crying for like another two days. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's just keep it. It's just coming. Because, no, but that was scary for me, babe. Yeah. It was like I could speak in my mind. I, I wish I could. I could never explain the feeling. I remember hearing sirens, like loud, loud was alarms. That, was that because of the alarm? That that the one that triggered you. Remember that one that when you thought Sienna was like, like okay, so that was the first thing. Yeah. So basically, what happened was I was in my sleep. Sorry, I wish so I, I don't you, remember you sleeping. Basically, I you, you, you hadn't slept for like over two days because of the labor and just like the time everything happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you were exhausted. Mm -hmm. You lost a hell of a lot of blood. Yeah. Yeah, they said close to a liter. Mm -hmm. And so all of that in conjunction, mm -hmm. your body just basically shut down, didn't it? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm i never going to know. Like, I just know that when I woke up and I heard that, that's what woke me up the alarm. But maybe in my head was it louder than what i what it was like i don't remember mm. and i think Can you still hear it in your head t to me it sounded like a like a crazy fire alarm and i thought someone pressed it not me i thought someone pressed it because sienna's choking and when i was looking at sienna i literally hallucinating i was hallucinating her like kind of coughing and choking and that's when i was like i can't reach her and because i was in so much pain so i couldn't at that point at that point i wasn't even mobile enough to get up so yeah and, and then i just ca i literally just came in then because but then i don't remember switched. what happened after that yeah because mom went home to get some rest Did I go back to bed? no i think so because i came in and the alarm was going off and because you told me she's choking i thought she's choking mm -hmm. so i panicked and i just went and called midwife i said someone get right and it was so quiet in there because it was like early morning i was like nurse 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 come here come here come here the nurses then ran in and then they were like She's not choking. She's fine. Yeah. And everything was just like, okay. But you were like, your drip had run out. Oh, okay. So that's when the alarm goes off. Okay, yeah, yeah, Man, and a heart attack. And then like, you were just like, yeah, it's gone. Everything was gone. Like, you yeah, but then were, I don't remember the rest. Because you were, you didn't know who I was. So basically, I just started speaking injection? to you. No, because I tried talking to you and you didn't recognize me. You didn't know who I was. So what did I say? You didn't know. You, you said, have I had the baby yet? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I said, yeah, 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 she's here. And you're like, no, I have so you still thought you were pregnant. Okay. And then you kept, I kept asking, you didn't know who I was. You're like, who are you? Who are you? I said, I'm your husband. She goes, and you didn't understand. I said, my name's Omar. And then I was like, what day is it? You didn't know. Okay. Um, I was like, do you have any idea what's happened? Like you, and you were so out of it, like almost mumbling. I said, what's your name? You didn't know. So then I called your mom. I was like, mom, look like, and she's really like seems like mentally off right now yeah you need to come back so mom bless her she's totally tired came all the way back in an uber she probably didn't even sleep yeah man and then like she was upset like mom, your mom was crying man like she was really sad and then then um was she asking me the same questions yeah because you you you, you were visibly like unwell there was something got wrong mm -hmm. right so it was like okay well sienna was fine she was sleeping at the point mm -hmm. and then they got a psychologist so immediately like these two psychologists came up yeah um Oh, I don't know what this is. I think psychology is the word. And they were literally like asking you so many questions. Yeah. How many fingers are holding up? Okay. Everything. And you were out. So they were saying, look. Was I sleeping? No, like you were, you, you were responding like all the wrong things. Oh. Yeah. So like they were like, look, it could be a situation where post, uh, you know, pre birth, it could yep. be trauma. Yeah. You know, sometimes like various. But then it also knew, look, the amount your body just been through, you could be exhausted and your whole like kind of system is just off right now. Like nothing centered. So then what they said is, look, move it to an acute unit. So it took you into a unit where you just had one nurse watching you the entire time. Yeah. And you were there for like maybe the entire day. And Did Sienna I, was Was I you. awake or? No, you were sleeping. So oh. they just let you sleep. So they gave you oxygen mm -hmm. and a mask, um, gave you a drip, had Sienna next to you. Mom stayed there the whole time. So mom looked after Sienna? And mom was there. Yeah, yeah. Then I went home. So even after that, mom let me go and rest and then she stayed. And she must have been knackered. And then, oh my um, God, she must have been so tired. Yeah, and they just watched you. I remember that nurse. Remember that nurse that came to you afterwards in the ward? You might have remembered her. Really nice lady. And she was the one who was watching you. I remember one thing. So from the alarm to all of this, I, yeah. don't, I don't remember this. I remember the alarm ringing, then I called you and that was it. Then I also remember a very blurred vision of me going on a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah but then yeah, I think yeah. I passed out then as well. Yeah, we couldn't even get you on the wheelchair. Okay, so I don't remember going. I don't remember getting on the wheelchair. Yeah. I remember being sat on a wheelchair. Yeah. I remember waking up. I remember seeing a few people. Maybe it's just yeah. I don't know how many people were there. And then, then I was gone again. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Then you had to um, have a blood transfusion. Oh, was that was fine, but that gave me the shakes. That yeah. scared me. 
Because I remember saying, because obviously they've got, they've got like... You all get the right blood type and everything. Yeah, yeah. But they say this, you might like get a few things, blood like a fever yeah, yeah. and all these things. And I remember like, because I already suffered enough, I was like, my God, don't put me through any more. And then the moment I had the blood transfusion, I had, was shaking, like as in I had the biggest fever with it. Um, I was so scared that it was like blood poisoning. I'm going to die. What do they call it? That blood poisoning... No, I think you die if you have a poisoning from blood. Like I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, I'm not too sure, but your grandma I was had scared. it. You no, know, your grandma had that, right? I mean, I don't know. Did she? Yeah, your dad's mom. She she had the, that blood poisoning thing. Oh my god! god imagine the blood. There's a word for it. I can't remember what's called. Well, either way. Um, but yeah, but anyway, that that, that was yeah incredibly traumatic. And, and then I discharged myself from the hospital. Yeah, like, hey, I'm going. And they were so angry, weren't they? Remember yeah. that lady? She was so angry with us. They were so fed up. It'd been a week. Babe, I'm so like, I was exhausted coming there, and you were so tired of being in that same bloody bed. And you're like, just let us go. And it took so long discharging you. I was so angry. I remember I'm I was just like, I there, just like, want to get head. on the. And then I want to get in the car. My mom was angry because my mom's like, she just listens to doctors. So she was like, you know, if they say, say one more night. And I was like, so many people had come and gone. Not. People would come in for like a few hours and just leave their kid. Like, remember, so many people coming and going. Baby, time. the ward was empty. Do you not remember? It was just me. You, you were sitting on the opposite bed. Yeah, yeah. You were just chilling, had your own bed. Because it was that dead. I was, I've been there for a whole week. We're about to do it all over again. Oh, no. Inshallah, this, this time will be. I think, you know, it'll be a lot easier for you to know what to expect. And you'll be able to prepare in I'm advance for it. Now. You've got a lot of support from the hospital. So, inshallah, everyone just make the odds for us. Um, cool. So, now, like, man, I'm just thinking of all the other... Th- Possible things people yeah. have ever wanted to know what we speak about. Maybe they just wanted to hear us speak. Just like, no? hey, yeah. hey. Just like How a few you? words here and there. You know what I mean? Man, what else is there? What else goes... Actually, you know, I wrote some stuff down earlier. Okay, yeah. Let me figure out if we've... Uh, touched on a few subjects uh oh yeah so your 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 um i think a huge source of like inspiration for like girls who like Mm -hmm. follow you Mm -hmm. is like your and if they don't know it's about you i'm sure they sure that it comes across but Mm -hmm. i can vouch for it is your values Mm -hmm. like you have very strong values in in like with everything you know how people should be treated yeah you know um uh, uh, just the way people behave mm-hmm. you know conduct um uh, uh the way the, the things that people think and say like mm-hmm. all these different things like the your values are like very strong in them like yes and you don't bend on them no. you know so you're happy to tell someone straight look this is wrong mm-hmm. and this is why it's wrong mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. because that's something and it it's hard to govern those values for a lot of people because you know you're, you have influences you know you change them if you're in a different friend circle like all right, this won't matter today, you know, because I want to impress these people or whatever. Yeah. And I think for a lot of young girls growing up, they, they struggle with that because, you know, you, you a lot of times you know what's right and wrong, but it's hard to stay strong. Mm-hmm. But you've built this strength in you mm-hmm. that no matter who you're around, you could be around the most famous person in the world. Mm-hmm. You could be in a group with a bunch of people that like love and respect you or people who, uh, who would want you to feel validated with them. Mm-hmm. But you still are like, knows no with that because I believe that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm okay with this. Yeah. So was that something you developed from like a, a young age? And how can girls like develop that type of like value structure in a sense? I think I've always been like that, yeah. Omar. Like my mom and dad always said I was super strong headed, like even as a kid, mm. <laughs> as a toddler. Um, I remember even in school, I didn't budge on things. So I remember like when it comes to smoking and drinking and all these things that people would try and, you know, I never even wanted to try them. So even if people would be like, you know how kids are like, oh, you know, oh, so you don't want to try this. You're such a worse. So you're this or you're that. Like mm. little pansy. You can't do this, right? I it never, it never bothered me. I was like, I'd rather be that. Can't bother to try it. Yeah. Um, I just think the opinion of people didn't, didn't bother me. I think that's literally all it was. Um, I also went through a stage where People who, okay, so it's like people in general didn't bother me. They could say what they want. But if I loved someone or if I was close to someone, they said something, that would bother me. So I had to learn that side of it, that no, they're still human and you still should stand your ground, which took me a little time. Um, But yeah, I think as, I think just me being me and growing up, I think that's just the way I developed in general. 
Um, I've always been quite strong headed. Um, I've always been strict with certain things. I think my family members and maybe some of my friends can s- probably vouch for that. They'll probably be like, I come across a bit strict. Yeah. I'm not strict. I'm just, I just know w- what I want and what I don't but want. But you know what it is? Oh, you, I, you, I just know it. Yeah. And a lot of these times when you see these situations, like obviously I see them. The Normally you're right. Yeah, and you're right because you say something that, that it, you know when you have like an internal uh, voice speaking to yourself that, yeah. you know is, that you know what you're doing is wrong mm-hmm. but a lot of people ignore it and yes. they still do the other opposite you tell them what that internal thought is mm-hmm. and like that look you sh- this is what you sh- you must say out loud what they're trying to hide away from but at the same time I can't just sit here and be like oh my god I'm just so perfect and I mm. you know did it. I have made so many mistakes yes, in my yes. life because I've, all, I've also been there and done that does that make sense like I've I've made mistakes and, but I think the reason maybe why I'm so strong now going into like my late 20s, going into 30s, um, is actually because I learn also off guilt. I have, I'm, when I feel guilty, it kills me. Like, oh my God, it ruins my day, ruins my week. Like it will put me into serious depression. Okay. So to save me from that, I might as well not make the mistakes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I when I've made my mistakes, trying to like grown up, been a teenager, whatever, I learned that a lot of the time it was guilt that made me change because I didn't want I didn't want to hurt people. Second of all, I didn't want to have that feeling in my body, and I just knew like there has to be a turning point, and yeah, I need to I need to grow up. And I think a lot of girls either blame things on peer pressure, which I don't agree with. Because again, like you can grow. I, I grew up with loads of girls and guys who did certain things and it never bothered me. I'm not saying everyone's going to be as strong as me, but I'm saying I don't think that's a good enough excuse yeah. to turn out the way you want to turn out. Yeah. Um, and I know that they also struggle maybe like in their families, maybe they're scared to speak up on certain things, maybe traumatic things have happened to them. I don't know. There's obviously certain reasons why girls are closed up or girls can't stand up for themselves or whatever the reason is. I don't know. But I think if you work towards being someone, a woman who you want to be for yourself, for your future, for your, yeah, for your husband, I, I don't know, for your kids, um, you should actually just not pay attention to the world because you can't live your life around other people yeah, that doesn't yeah, make yeah, sense yeah, yeah. how are you going to be happy of course with yourself if you're always trying to people please yes or you're just trying to mold yourself into something that oh let me fit in with this crowd that doesn't make sense you, like you, your whole life is going to be misery of course and people do that a lot man a lot it's a lot of life, like I said, it's a lot of lifestyle you see, like like I said, you see on Instagram, loads of girls live a certain way, yeah. do they? How do you not know? They just went to Selfr- Selfridges and went to a picture with a bag yeah. and then come back home. It's tough, yeah, because and you, cause you don't want to be responsible for that, the type, yeah, encouraging that type of like lifestyle that then comes because of the, oh yeah, you're getting a financial benefit out of it. But then look at the destruction you might be doing to so many young girls. Or you want to fit in the cool crowd. Or there's so yes. many things that people make you feel. This yeah. is it. It's how people, society makes you feel as a girl. But if you become your own woman and become comfortable in who you are, how you look, how you dress, how you speak, whatever, you won't even need to get validation or even want to fit in. Mm. You'd be cool to be that weird person, to yeah, walk yeah, into the yeah. room, to walk into the event or wherever you're going look how you want, speak how you want, whatever. As long as you know you are a kind-hearted human being, obviously don't turn into like a nut job with it. But as in, I know that even if I'm the one that's the weird one or like I don't fit in with the crowd or when I go to places, I'm not, don't talk about the same things, I've got the same experiences. I am so cool with it because I just know who I am and where I want to go, what I want to be. Um, I know I'm like a kind-hearted human being. I mean, well, so... To me, that and that, strips that's a, life. that strips away all the ego, all the insecurity, because you don't come with that bravado. You know, you, right. don't, you don't come with that energy that is that like, trying to be the it girl in the room, yeah, or like whatever. Know. And I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards you as well, is because you know you have all of the you know you know you're beautiful, mashallah. You're stylish. You know you're doing well for yourself. You have all the exterior mm. that if a 
like a stuck up personality goes to go with it it's almost like the default you'd think oh a girl like this she must be like this yes but because on the other side it's like whoa like the, the interior is so beautiful too it's um i think that's why people would be really gravitate towards you they're like okay well like and also you don't put such a high value on um, the external you know it's not all about the way you look the body this that the other I like think I, I get in trouble for that sometimes I know right? but you mm-hmm. but you're a makeup artist so you have to express you know your art you know and you help girls look more beautiful through you know but, but at it's the same okay time to look like shit. sorry it's okay to look like shit. it's okay yeah look at the picture you put you put a random picture of you yourself you know you're like you're just as you are at home and that's mm. what's nice though it's like it's okay to be like that it's completely okay no and also because it's more beautiful i mean fact. isn't that just like life exactly oh uh, does everyone sit on the couch with like makeup on all the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like their chanel earrings yeah i don't, I don't know do, do people yeah. do that it's I crazy know. i just think it's literally the way the world the right the way the world is going is scary mm. for girls i'm scared for sienna i'm worried um but with the right direction a couple of normal things in life i think everything can be okay i just don't think you should live up to this fake lifestyle a lot of things are portrayed on in- instagram and on social media and it is fake this is why i don't have a lot of friends because I feel like when I go to events or I go to certain things, we genuinely don't have things in common. It's literally like, hey, what's good? That's about it. I'm about to say hi, do my thing and leave because I can't sit there and talk about sushi or I can't sit there and talk about this like um, amazing high-end restaurant. I've never been. Like, I, I, I don't know these. I don't know these things. I still to this day don't know these things. Um, I don't care to. Like, it's just, there's more to life than what people are making out yeah, to be. I know, so the, the, your friends that you're closest with, like, They're you guys so have a silly crazy. time. Yeah, yeah, you, you have, have the a, best time. A silly time about the most basic thing, like you order McDonald's drive through, sit at home, yeah. chuck on a thriller. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, just, just completely like, like your craving is like a, a Coke. Like, you know what I mean? Just Love si- it, yeah. Silly things though. And I think that's just so real and normal. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, there's no desire to want to like, there's nothing, yeah. I've never seen I you get along with like the, the bouginess. Because yeah. I feel like I'm late. I'm so lazy as well. Like even going out, like looking stylish and stuff. I yes, I love it. Love yeah. dressing. I love clothes. Love shopping. Um, but I don't think I have the patience to like just dress like a certain way every day to go out, get some pictures, or go to bougie places, go to bougie restaurants to do this. And I just can't live my life like that. Mm because i mean that isn't life is it let's yeah, be fair yeah. like you, you have really to who you are and you, you know who you are you're not trying to again you're not playing in the system you know this is this isn't this isn't a game for you that you're trying to win your your instagram your social media is expression for yourself yeah you're just you know and you're lucky and you have worked hard that you know you'll be able to build what you built but it's not like everything to you um, and so the part of you that is it is is okay to be real about it because it's not because it's not the center of your life you're not trying to play the game to make it everything, you know? You're like, okay, well, this is a part of my life mm-hmm. and I've done anything to gain or lose. Like, it's just a part of my life. Therefore, I might as well be real. Because uh, you're, you're happy in so many dimensions, yeah. you know? Like, you're surrounded with love. You're surrounded with laughter and, you know, wealth of happiness in other yeah. areas that you're... And that's why I think it makes it easier for you to make the decisions I see you make when you're like, you know, I'm not doing that because I will be less happier maybe more rich but less happier yes and i'd take happiness any day yeah and i think also obviously you know this when i created my page and like worked for myself i didn't actually have a motive mm. Mm. right it kind of just grew and then whatever happened happened. And then you, yeah the, the brands came to you over you know, so okay, because cool, i didn't right, have yeah. a motive maybe that maybe people who like work for themselves like maybe plan things out but because i was kind of just going with the flow that I still feel the need to just go with the flow. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. have structure with my things. And I like no structure. I like a bit of mess because that's part of my life. Um, I don't know. It's just mm. like the way I, I like living like that. Of course, of course, of course. And I think you, you also have so much like vision. It's a strong vision of like where you want to go. Yeah. You know, you're very confident in that. Yeah. Um, how do you, do you, do you, how far ahead do you think? Like, do you think like, this is where I want to be in like five, 10 years or do you just like kind of, I mean, because so much has changed over the last like one year, three years, you know, we couldn't predict That's why it. I was saying to so, you earlier, yeah. like I can't 
go too forward with it mm. because I don't know. But I do have like a blurred vision. Yeah. So it's not like a strict five-year plan. Yeah. No. Um, I do see myself as a certain in a certain place by the time I'm 30 in two years. Yeah. I like to vision those things, but I'm also super real and I might drop dead by the time I'm like 29. I don't know what God's plan is. Mm. So what I'm living kind of by the day, by like um, what I'm working towards yeah. more than a planned out vision. Sure. I think it was working well for you. Mm. You're doing really well, babe. Thanks, babe. I'm very, very proud of you. Thanks. You're an incredible human being. Okay. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm <laughs> <pretty> <laughs> no, no, really no. Yeah. I don't know how to take these compliments because I feel I like never take we always... Um, we were just being goofy. Yeah. Yeah. We never sit there and be like, hey. Hey, babe. That's why I let you but know. But do you remember last night, I, I told you to look at me with love and you laughed in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to have, so we tr- we try to have this five second, like 10 seconds just like staring in each other's like, eyes. Yeah. And I start laughing. That's <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Like, so, it's so goofy, man. But I think, you know, because I, I can be so serious. Like, my goofiness has only come out because of Shaz. Yeah. Fassel as well, actually. Fassel, like, has that kind of just like yeah, craziness so about funny, him. Yeah. yeah. But I think because you're so like, like whatever yeah at home like you if you guys saw if you had a cctv in a house and you guys saw it's it crazy you would not understand who i am like the way we're messing about like the stupidness Baby, so crazy people just don't know i know but i can't you know what it is because i'm i'm i know i'm introverted in so many ways that like i like to you know be, be focused on what i'm doing i like to be like proper about it and i like to just like handle myself but that's why i like these conversations on the podcast because it allows me to kind of just chat and have a laugh yeah. and be goofy and all that stuff but yeah you, i think with you i know the reason it's so delightful being married to someone like you is because everything's nothing's too serious nothing nothing's too good nothing's too bad no, you know what i mean yeah. so it's like if i come home and i'm like yeah i did this today this day it's like you're very good at humbling me i mean like, you know what okay great cool you know what i mean and but you still understand that it's a good achievement yeah. but then also when it's a bad day like i'll come home and i'm like wrecked yeah, like, you know how to just, like, within 10 minutes, switch it up, and you know what my triggers are to make me feel better again. I make you laugh all the time. Yeah, and yeah. you know that, oh, man, like, I look forward to going home because it's, like, my third day, my, my first day is my morning routine, my gym, da, da, da. my second day is my work. My third day is, like, coming home and, like, just... And that's why I have so much energy when I come home because you guys got energy. I come home, Sienna jumping about, you yeah. having a good time, like... And it's like that every day. I know. Like, every day, alhamdulillah, like, you come home, it's just, like goofiness silliness what we eating what we doing playing it by the ear and like I'm yeah so, i feel like I i'm love so lucky mm. um and grateful that like god placed you in my life oh, i don't think you. i could have married anyone else on this earth oh, do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah because like we get on i just feel like we get on so well i mean let's be fair when we argue it's hilarious yeah. we can laugh, but that's another thing we can laugh about it after yeah, yeah, exactly. so that's great as well it's never that bad it, though yeah no we obviously argue about stupid yeah. things but as in like that's what i'm saying like everything about us is still a positive even in a negative situation right, right, right. and it's like we still i hope that in 15 20 years time we still want to hang out yeah inshallah. Ooh, i man. mean even though yesterday i cancelled on our cinema that's date fine. that's okay it's you're okay. pregnant yeah you should yeah three, for the next three months let me be boring it's okay um but yeah we always have fun right road trips and even going to tesco we yeah, have fun yeah, 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 yeah. like it's we are very very lucky to have like, each other in our lives alhamdulillah yeah i think that comes with comes down to as well like letting yourself be free to each other as well you know dropping right. all those guards which mm-hmm. is a tough thing to do but over time like, learning to just drop those barriers um and i think like the 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 calmness that i'm able to have in situations and then the fun you're able to have in situations i think that 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 makes things easier for me because i like to like really understand things they calm mm-hmm. like figure them out but then you're also like very like just you know whatever about it so yeah, like it kind yeah, of balances yeah. it out where it's like okay let's take things seriously but let's let's just have a good time at the Relax. same time yeah 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 and at the, t- at the same time you you're able to look at life as like one big holistic thing and be like okay look we're here for what 80 years like i'm lucky enough to be married young someone amazing have like kids there's so many blessings so why would i you know lose my nut over like things that i can't control or like materialistic things you know it's like no like there's so much more to this if i can have 60 more years of this man i feel like the most like richest man in the world you know i'm saying like it's like everyone everyone on this earth is going to have downfalls and bad days and bad times 
it's more so about training your mind into concentrating on all the blessings that you have. And I think every human struggles with that. That's why there is things like anxiety, depression, mm-hmm. paranoia. There's a, that's why there is things like that. Because we as humans naturally just dwell on like all the things that can happen in our lives. You yes. know, we, we all experience loss and that comes in different ways. So death, breaking up with your partner, I, d- I don't know, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and we all have to experience heartbreak and stuff, but it's more so how you come out of it than in that moment. Mm-hmm. So I think all of us should, I think, I, I just think in life we should all try and yeah, I think concentrate more on what we have than what we don't have and make us our brain stronger in a mental like a mental state. 100%. Mm. I think uh, so many girls will find inspiration in like hearing you speak mm-hmm. so openly. Yeah. So like yeah, just so raw and um I don't think anyone's really gets to have this like level of insight into like the way you and it's so crazy. I'm sitting here with you and I know so much about mm-hmm. your yeah. course so like I'm trying to see it from a lens of someone who like doesn't get this insight in your life all the time. Yeah. You know, but even this is refreshing for me because, you know, we're just here just having a conversation like and be able to kind of reflect on things that we've been through. And it's rare you even do that mm-hmm. as a couple. It's rare you just sit there hours on end speaking about like day one, 10 out, you mm-hmm. know? So I think in that sense it's beautiful. And, it, you know, being able to share this journey with like, you know, the people who like see our stuff and, you know, I think it's, it's it's really nice, you know. I, I see it from a, a legacy point of view as well, mm-hmm. because I love for our kids to be able to listen back to this. Yeah, I love for you know anyone else who can relate to even a small part of our lives, apply it to theirs. It's like that's kind of refreshing, um, and also being able to you know like I, I I wouldn't be able to, and I know you wouldn't be able to share with the world what we do if it wasn't completely genuine mm-hmm. you know like the fact that this is really what we go through yeah the hard time you see the hard times we put out when we're going through like all the madness mm-hmm. but at the same time you'll see the good stuff and you know see the smiles and the genuine happiness and the, the, the fun time to see anna and etc it's those things i think you know if they can provide any sort of light or guidance in people's lives man like you know the one thing you won't get from us legit is like fakeness or just like stupid you know what i mean just yeah, with nothing we've th- done for I the just sake don't think of I have time for it yeah, yeah. the wrong uh, you know there's too much else to to worry about so you know we, we, we're so grateful for like any bit of like love you guys show mm-hmm. you know even embracing us in any kind of way yeah um yeah man it's just it's just mad humbling so thank you and uh thank you babe i think uh, i mean thanks for having me on your podcast nice, because wicked, you, know? you um boyed you off quite a few times yeah I'm glad you came on though. I'm glad we did this. We got the right time. Yeah, this yeah. is a lovely time. It's nice. It's nice. You know, there's a lot, a new, nice transition happening. Yeah. New baby. A lot's happened up to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, it's nice to share this many. There were so many years we just shared right now. Mm, mm, mm. Um, up to now, and then there'll be so many years more. Yeah, to we'll share. do like a version two sometime in the future. In like three years. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was a, a hair falling out. Yeah. I can't believe. You know what we should do? You know when you do that thing where every seven years they film those kids in the school? There you go. Yeah. We should do something like that. Like, and you will see this episode like ten episodes later. When we're doing I'd be sad because like, I feel like I'd be more fun now than I will be in ten years. I did. What I did an episode. Like it was ugh, not episode, but like it was like five years ago before my granddad passed away. With like just a year before he passed my nan and granddad like this but they was they were sitting in front of the camera and i was behind the camera asking questions they were talking to the camera mm-hmm. and i filmed it and i How still got cute. it but the reason i did that and i was so lucky i got that before he passed away yeah is because they were speaking about their entire life and they were giving advice to like our kids at the time none of us had kids okay saba didn't have kids obviously i didn't there was wow. there was no grandkids okay. great grandkids for them so now that there's like almost gonna be five you know so many of us mm-hmm. like we I know that like, that would be so cute for them to hear. But then in the same respect like this, it'll be timeless. Like it'll always be online. You know, they can always get a sense of like, you know, our, our grandkids, great grand- grandkids. It's so I cool, I just man. find it so cute that our kids will get to it. It's mad, right? Yeah. Like, like oh, that's that was so like, cute. That was our parents. Yeah. And we'll, we'll look back on it. Uh, we're like gray haired. It's that. just a nice memory. Yes. For me, for this sure. is a great memory. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. As you are. You're Thanks. beautiful too. Thanks, babe. On that note, before Shaz cringes out. Yep. We're going to wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to the Ozone. Oh, thanks for having me. With my wife, mm-hmm. Shaz, Shyster. Mm-hmm. That's her real name. Mm. Shake Beauty. Mm. Peace. <laughs>